We're starting the programme a little differently today with our guest. He is the man who currently runs the country. Yeah. Earlier this week, he warned of dangerous and transformational years ahead, arguing that he was the one to lead us through them. Um, well, here to talk on the issues that are important to you, including the new guidance on sex education teaching in schools that was announced just this morning. Please welcome the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Uh, You've got your own mug and I'm everything. Very excited about this mug. Very excited. Yeah. My office were asking about the mug before I came, so yeah. they're going to be yeah. particularly happy. Are you a fan of loose women? Well, I, look, I'll be totally honest. <laughs> <laughs> Not a political yeah. reply. We no. want a real good yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on, tell the truth. It, no, well, it, it, it might it's, be difficult. It's on, but... on occasion at the back of the office, which is my main uh, familiarity with it. And I've got to say, I've done a lot of things in this job, but being here is probably on the more intimidating end of things <laughs> I have to do. Yeah. So let's see how it goes. Oh, you were worry. quite smiley earlier. Earlier, weren't yeah. you? Will uh, you be smiley in five minutes? <laughs> 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 what have you got? Which what you've got? Don't you worry, Janet will look after you. You think I'd be used to it? I, well, I have a family of uh, a family of girls because I have yeah. two young girls. Yeah. Even our dog is a girl, so in yeah. one sense, I ought to be okay with it. But yeah. this definitely feels. Oh, no, let's find well, out. Yeah, absolutely. Right. <laughs> well, let's talk about these new guidelines that have been issued. This is England only, of course. This is new guidance about sex education. So, really, no sex education before the age of nine and then nothing explicit uh, before the age of 13. Now, given that half of our children we know have viewed online porn yeah. before the age of 13, arguably, you know, the genie's out of the bottle here. You know, would you not be better having children discuss these issues with trusted teachers than allowing them to the wild west of the internet? Yeah. So, first thing to say is, look, as I have two young girls who are, you know, 11 and 13, it's something that we've been just going through as, as parents. And what was important to me was that we should let kids be kids. Mm -hmm. And I'm worried, and we should talk about the online thing more generally, but, you know, what worried me was parents were not being allowed to know what was happening with their kids when it came to these sensitive subjects, and they were being exposed to things which you just thought, hang on, are they really, is that the right age for them to be told certain things, discussing certain things? So that, that's where I came but at it from. So that very, that very... they're seeing it on the internet. Yeah, and, we should, and actually we're doing some things as well on the internet to make sure that we remove harmful content from the internet. But when it comes to these things, there's a couple of simple principles that I actually think are relatively common sense. The first is that parents should always be allowed to know what their kids are being taught at schools, mm. right? There shouldn't, be, there shouldn't be a situation which we've had where schools have said to parents, no, you can't see the materials. That's not right. So we're making it crystal clear. Yeah. Parents can always see these sensitive things. And then the second thing is just a system of age ratings. Same way that when we take our kids to the films, everything else, you know, we have a series of age ratings which broadly say, look, this is about the right age that they should be allowed to see these things. And it's the same with these very sensitive subjects and making sure we're just doing that in an age-appropriate way. I suppose and the presumption is there, isn't it, that all children are growing up in supportive and loving homes, mm. and unfortunately we know that's not the case. And, you know, that a lot of parents are under an enormous amount of pressure at the moment and sometimes don't have the time to sit and speak with their children. About. I mean, obviously that's that's going to be different in, in your home. I think but it's for a lot of children, they're not in that environment. It's probably going to be different. No, every home is, is going to be different. I mean, you know, lots of parents, lots of parents here. Everyone will do this in their own way, and none of this stuff is easy. Mm. I know that. But I do think we should be trying to support parents through that. And I think most parents would want to know what their kids are being taught, know that it's happening at a, an appropriate time in their development, yeah. letting them have their childhood, um, but, of course, giving them you know, the information they need to navigate through life. What? And, that's what, and that's what this is about. And I think it wasn't just us saying this. You had the Children's Commissioner, the Independent Inspector of Schools. Yeah. Lots of people raised concerns about what was going on. And that's why we've just said, look, let's apply a bit of common sense, put parents at the heart of it, and, and have some guidelines about what's what appropriate. What sex education way. did you get at school? What did you know about sex at the age of 13? I mean, obviously, you weren't dealing with social media but... no no actually i can't you know now i think about it i can't quite remember when i went through exactly that period but, but did but... your parents tell you or did you learn it from leaflets and other kids um that is i'm an older kid so yeah. and uh, i'm an older kid and so and where was i i'm trying to think probably a mix of things actually but it's very different now because of social media yeah, so what and about i think and actually if you then? think look, when i was a kid i don't think you were hearing the concerns that you were, that mm -hmm. children were being exposed to lots of different things. You know, I mean, we've got lots of people talking to kids, they were talking about you can have 72 different gender identities, or very young kids being exposed to things which clearly aren't appropriate. Now, I don't remember that being an issue when, when I was younger, but clearly that is now an increasing concern. And I just think it's reasonable, at the end of the day, 
parents must be able to allow <coughs> to know what's going on. A system of age ratings informed but, by expert but, advice but about what's minister. appropriate, and then making sure that we teach kids the facts, you know, biological, yeah. you know, sex, uh, okay, biology. But by saying that's they're not going to learn about a whole host of things in primary school, it's just going to be park till they get to secondary school. I would argue that a quarter of five to seven-year-olds now have smartphones. So you, you are, as we said at the very beginning, trying to stop something that is actually too late. Well, remember that every parent is ultimately going to be in charge of that so side of things. So what about and your kids, though? Do they, you... did, they did not have smartphones at five to seven years old. Did they have of course, they, of course they did. Yeah, so both, both of my kids got smartphones at the last year of primary school. Mm. And and we this is something that I grapple with, my wife and I as a parent, exactly these questions. But, do you have more rows about this than anything else? Because it, it, in most people, parents' experience, we, yeah, that is I, the case. I don't know, we don't have rows, but I think what we are doing is with our kids, making sure that they use these things responsibly and mm. talking to them about it, making sure they're aware of some mm. of the things online. I know this is something that, Judy, you've talked yeah. about in the past. Yeah. And actually, as a parent, you know, actually familiarising ourselves with all the parental controls that are out there and it's making sure that we actually use them. It's so difficult yeah. Yeah, and I there's think... people out there that are really up against it. Yeah. You know, with, with real problems with the cost of living, yeah. you know, people working two jobs, and of course they care and love for mm. their children, but they can't always necessarily be all across their social media. I mean, hats off to you, to be honest, if you're across your kids' social media, yeah. because I've got two girls as well, and it's I would hard. be a liar if I said that so I'm I all across the I social media. I completely agree with that, right? And you say hats off to me. Yeah. It's only recently that, as mm. part of actually doing the work as Prime Minister to figure this yeah. out, that I've come across the, the range of controls and tools that there are, that my wife and I personally we were not on top of originally, and now we're more familiar with it. I so say, I think you're right. But, but, Prime Minister, look, you know, obviously we're talking about children here in regards to social media and the risks that they're, they're at. And as a parent, there's a lot of things yeah. that I'm concerned about. Yes, regards to sex education. Yes, regards to social media. But also there's things that's happening in society, like, you know, gun crime is 20% yeah. higher than it ever was. A lot of people... Are sending their children to school and unfortunately as you've seen in these last few months their children have not come back home so things like knife crime we've got people that live in homes that had damp i was in social housing i lived in a home that had damp that was affecting my child's health we've got nhs workers right now as we're having this interview that are actually queuing to go to food banks and i know you were saying in your exchange policy statement that um we're going to have the most dangerous and hard and transitional period in the next two years but i feel like the question should should be um, not what are you going to do, but when are you going to do something to make a change? People are suffering right now. What are you going to do and when are you going to do it? So, on, the, on, on social media, Judy, so on social media, we are making that change already. So, we passed a law called the Online Safety Act mm. uh, I think last Judy year. Judy was talking about poverty. There, really. Yeah, yeah but I was just going to start with all the things that you talked about. And but I think I that's think really it's important for you to get into the juice of it. We've sure. heard so oh. many things. That yeah. The concerns, as a mum here sitting with you with a 14 year and an 18 year and many other that are watching, and what is happening now? So, we are right now, so, to poverty okay. in UK. So, let's do all this. So, on, on social media, right now, what is happening is that the regular Later, Ofcom is going through and is specifying exactly what is permissible and not yeah. permissible. I mean, online. that's a big subject, online safety, but it's already being watered down by the tech companies from no, what it was that's, originally. That's not right. Mm. And actually, the regulator, what the bill does, the law does, is give the regulator the power to fine these big tech companies an enormous amount if they don't comply with the new rules that are published. They're so making sure that kids aren't exposed to harmful content, self harm, so eating those children disorders. children who are not and, exposed to it because they don't even have the means for gas and electric in their homes. What are we doing? to helping those parents that are suffering and helping the people that are trying to help us at the front line, that are looking to you for a safe line. Yeah. We've got people that are going to work and they are not eating because we're in a state of poverty. What is going to take place now? What are you going to do now to address this? So financial security is something I was talking about on, on Monday. That's saying it's probably the most acute concern that people have is their financial security. And look, we've been through a really tough time. You yeah. know that, right? You've been talking about it on your show for the last few years a pandemic, a war in Ukraine, energy bills. Mm. None of this has been easy for anybody, Judy. So what we've done during that time is continually provide support to people. And you saw, that. You, saw, you saw that with me during the pandemic and furlough, right? There were millions yeah. of people who've 
we thought they were going to lose their jobs, and we stepped in to provide that support. We did the same with energy bills. <laughs> Around half of a typical family's We've energy bill. Four million was, children was, living was, in uh, poverty. Made sure Prime we were Minister. covered, and then more recently, you know, what we've done is made sure that our welfare system is working. Benefits are being upgraded for those people who are in work <clears> that you Prime talked Minister, about. How do we've you delivered think... a, a big tax cut Prime which will Minister, put more my, money in my their bank accounts is, every month. How do you connect with these people? A lot of people are concerned that you cannot emotionally connect to them because you haven't and don't live the life that they have lived. So how do you connect with people when they're saying to you that they're worried to send their child to the local shop because of knife crime, when they're worried to sleep in their home because of damp, when they're worried to go to work or take a day off sick, even though they're suffering with mental health because they don't want to miss that paycheck? How do you connect with people like this when so, they need you to protect them as their Prime Minister? So I just, again, I'd point you to what happened in the pandemic, right? So pandemic happened, right? I had this job, new job as Chancellor. Most people didn't know who I was. I did, I did. Now, <laughs> now, at that moment, all the things that you just said, Judy, were true then, oh. right? And I wasn't going to lose my job. It's not as if the pandemic mm. restrictions were going to mean that every MP was fired or every minister was fired and lose their job and shut down. So um, all the things that you just said then were true at that <clears> moment. <throat> But I knew that the right thing for the country was for us to step in and support people through it, protect those 10 million jobs, and that's what I did. Same thing happened with energy bills. That's what, that's what we did. So look, I think I'd ask people to judge me by my actions, and whenever the country's been in these moments, that's what I've done, that's who I am as a person, that's how I was raised, and you're, you're right. How was, I am, you, how was you raised? Yeah, but I was... I was now, uh, but oh. Let me ask you something, just moving it slightly on to my generation, the pensioners. I want to ask you a very simple question. I think you're a decent man. I do think you work really hard. Hats off to you for that. I think your heart's in the right place. But why do you hate pensioners? <laughs> why do you hate pensioners? That is the only conclusion that I can come to as a result of the spring budget. So you lowered national insurance by four pence. Big deal. Pensioners don't pay NI. Then you froze the tax threshold. So, yes, you gave us more pensions. Yes, you increased the pension. But that leaves a gap of only £1,000 before, or if you get the uh, basic average pension, to the threshold of paying tax. Now, so many pensioners are living in poverty. I think about two million. Mm. I think the most poverty-stricken pensioners are living in private rental accommodation. One in three in private rental accommodation are below the poverty line. So there's an argument that uh, the pensioners have come out worse under the Tories or worse under you, your uh, supervision. And I would say as a pensioner that what I see is a lot of pensioners who'd like to take extra jobs to make ends meet, to buy little treats, to go out once a month to put some petrol in the car. But if they earn any money, more than £1,000 a year, they're going to be paying tax. Now, does that seem right? So, Janet, I care deeply about pensioners because I also believe in a country where if you work hard all your life, then you should have the dignity and respect that you deserve in retirement. Again, you talk about how I was raised, that's really important to me personally. And, you know, as a, as a kind of side part to that, I'm, I've been working really hard to make sure this is one of the best countries in the world to be a veteran, because I think that's something that we need to make real, and I'm really pleased that we've made progress. But so what are we doing for pensioners? Well, it was a Conservative government that introduced the triple lock mm. to ensure that pensions go up by the highest of either earnings, prices, or 2.5%. Mm. You know, lots of people criticise us for that. They, uh, by I, the way, I'm not, right? I'm not criticizing you're not, you. but I'm just saying lots of people do. But we've protected it, and, okay, and you but... know what? That is meaning that, that that means that the state pension right now has just gone up by nine hundred pounds. Yeah, I know, right? but and so that... has and when you the talk cost about... of basic living, yep. and also, sorry to talk over you. You have supply pension credits, but. There's so many people who have never claimed them. So your government or your civil servants or whatever have got a communication problem well, because £2.4 billion was unclaimed. So what we did over credit. winter, because you didn't ask me, what were we helping with energy bills over winter? So for everyone, all pensioners, received double their winter fuel payment. They didn't have to yeah. apply for it. Yeah. They, they were just given it. Right? And that's doubles so up to £300 extra over the winter to help with energy bills. The state pension's gone up by £900, far greater than inflation and prices mm. are rising. Thankfully, we've got inflation down now. So I think that will really help. And you talked about that pensioner who's working a little bit extra. To your point, as you said earlier, they don't pay the national insurance, which is great because mm. we want to encourage that work. So they're not paying 
tax on that work. And for everyone else, I don't look. I'm not apologising. I know you said I, you said you I, don't care about the national insurance, but in? for the 30 million people who are working, for the 30 million people who are working, all the people that Judy talked about as well, I think it is important to support them financially mm, as well. Yeah. And I am pleased that their taxes are being cut by £900 for an average worker, yeah. so we'll help with all the challenges that I know people face. I think we have about 45 seconds left now. <laughs> oh, my God, um, right. <laughs> no, I, 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 listen, I know you get asked about policy on every political programme you go on to. I kind of wanted to talk to you about, but we've run out of time, about Rishi the man, because I kind of feel sometimes that doesn't come across to the electorate. So mm. I just wanted to ask, you know, um, you, you talked this morning, you said, um, you wrote a piece this morning, being a parent is the most important job in the world. But there was a very interesting um, interview with your lovely wife, Akshata, at the, at the weekend, and she said that you're not having the same input at, in the family at the moment that you, you could, but obviously you've got this all-consuming job. Mm. Is that something that, that plays on your mind? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was very fortunate, as you say, I was raised in a very loving, tight-knit family. I think family is really important. It's probably the most important thing in all our lives. Mm. And, you know, not being able to be as good a dad, as good a husband as I would ordinarily like to be, of course it weighs on me. And what yeah. about the security side? Because obviously we've seen Robert Fico, the Sl Slovakian Prime Minister, is currently in hospital, attempted assassination. Oh. God. That, again, it's like, do you ever wake up in the morning and think, is this job worth it? <laughs> 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 no, no, I, it, it's an enormous privilege to do this job, right? Yeah. And it's a privilege because, actually, in particular, because we've and been through quite a Asian tough time. Prime Minister. Yeah, which is... Let's, it, let's say oh, how it is, you that's, are the first... That's very nice of you to say. Position. But you know what was wonderful about that, Judy, is that the fact that it actually wasn't that big a deal, and that says something wonderful about our country... Do you love... ..and how far we've come... Very quickly, time, last question. Uh, do you love question. the job enough that if you lose the election election in November. Uh, <laughs> I've got a holiday book then, so you if need to you... let me know. <laughs> <laughs> if you lose the election, will you stand down as an MP? No, gosh, I'm, I'm very much focused. I mean, I love being an yes MP. Yes or no? no? No, yes, of course I'm staying. I love being an You're MP. Staying. I love my I love my constituents. I love my home in North Yorkshire. It's wonderful. Well, and I love being able to get back then. there. And I'd happily come back and talk to you during the election. Brilliant. But I am focused on that election, right? I'm focused at the choice at that election, because we've been through a lot, but I do think, actually, the things that we're doing are starting to make a difference. We're not there yet, of course Prime Minister, not. sadly, and, we are at a time. Uh, but but I I at the election, the choice is about the future. Yeah. About and it's future. A, the choice is you know, who can deliver a secure future for you and your family. Do That's come back and tell us when about. the election yeah. is, and we'll be delighted to have you with us the then. November. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 <laughs>